Erda Moralioglu's collections have always been known for their sweeping narratives and attention to detail. Now, this same approach has been brought to Erdem's first store, which opened quietly in London's South Audley Street last week. Erdem's new store also coincides with the 10-year anniversary of his business, a neat way to mark the journey of a designer who started out with only a couple of stockists and a dream to build his own fashion brand. In an exclusive interview, Erdem speaks to the business of fashion about the journey of creating his new space, financing it without an investor, and the loyal customers that have enabled him to build one of London's most exciting new fashion brands. Hello, Erdem. It's lovely to be here with you today in your brand new store in Mayfair. Thank you for taking the time to sit down with the business of fashion. Um, I wanted to ask you a few questions about your store because there's yes. a building here with your name on it yes. <laughs> um, that, that just opened yesterday. Let's talk about the store because it's a, it, you know, opening a store is a big next step for a brand like yours. Mm. Um, why was now the right moment to do that? Um, I mean, it was definitely something that we planned and something that we knew we wanted to do. It was a question of figuring out our timing. This um, had a lot to do with finding the space. Uh, we started looking for um, a retail space about two years ago, and then the opportunity of this exact location came up, and it worked out that the opening would happen around the same time as our 10-year anniversary. And I felt like, what better way to celebrate my my 10-year anniversary than than opening up? A store, so it was um, the stars kind of aligned and led us here. So two years to put together a store, and I think maybe sometimes people don't appreciate, you know, all the effort and thinking it takes to make a space like this come alive. As a as a young brand, you know, one that's still defining its DNA and clarifying kind of the product assortment and, and how the how the brand exists in other ways, you know. Can you talk a little bit about how you thought about translating what has really only existed as a kind of brand in, in clothing into a physical space? I mean, sometimes when you do shows, of course, mm -hmm. you create a set where there's a physical space, but mm -hmm. this is like a permanent beacon for the brand Erdem. How did, how did you go about thinking about that? Well, um, I mean, firstly, we worked with a, an amazing um, architecture and design firm, P. Joseph, which was set up by my partner, Philip Joseph, and his twin brother, uh, Peter Joseph. Um, uh, Philip and I met when we were at the Royal College, uh, so he's you know seen every single show. He's been a part of every single show. We've we've worked together in 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 the sense that Philip would always work on the actual designs of the actual shows. So. Um, so he understood the DNA. Yeah, in a way, you know, who better to design the actual space than someone who's actually seen every single collection? Um, but you know what? It's, I mean, that's a really good question. I, I, I think we took um, a very similar approach to kind of almost creating a show. It was, it was really about almost figuring out who she is, it, almost forensically, like figuring out, okay, what would she sit on? What would, what would the store smell like? What would she look at? And, I think more than anything, you know, the store's located in Mayfair um, on South Audley Street, uh, which ha has a, a wonderful history. And um, the kind of the bones of the space were so beautiful, but, but more than anything, we really wanted the space to be about her, it, it kind of almost like her Mayfair, pied -à terre kind of idea, like the idea of maybe it's something almost kind of reflective of, of how she would live. And that felt, that felt really interesting, kind of understanding who she is. That was, that was definitely the approach that we took can and the materials used. Can you talk a little bit more about her? Because, mm. you know, it's, you know, I, you know, we all read in the headlines that you dress all of these bold-faced A-list names. But, you know, the kinds of women that actually, the, the regular women, mm. you know, the real women that come mm. in and, and you imagine coming in here, mm -hmm. buying your collection. You know, who is that woman? I mean, I know it's hard to generalize, yeah. but like, give us a description as much as possible about who she is and why you think she comes to Erdem. 
I mean, that's, that's a good question. I, when I first started, um, we, had, we had such an inc a very small team, and often I would um, do trunk shows, and, and I would be the only one who would go to the trunk show with a trunk of clothes. Um, <laughs> so I'd, I'd find myself in, in Barney's, and I'd, I'd suddenly be kind of near my area where I'm sold, and, and I, would, um, I would meet customers. And, I think from very early on, I realized that kind of creating a distance between myself and the client was really important to really not have that distance, to really feel a kind of a connection to her. And, and um, in truth, the more, I, the, more, the more I do this in 10 years, I, I think I've realized in a way I almost know her less and less. She's, really? She's, it, it's really bizarre because you would think it would be the opposite. Yeah. I, she's, you know, She's 18, she's also 65, she's a mother, or she's, you know, a, a gallerist, she's a doctor, she's, um, she's French, she lives in Japan, she is uh, Turkish, she lives in LA, she's, she's so many different women. So I find it um, kind of like to describe like exactly who she is, I, I, the, more, the more I meet her, the more varied mm -hmm. I realize that she is. Yeah. So then there, then there must be some kind of universal appeal about what you do. And it, if, it's, if it's appealing or enticing to so many mm. different kind of women, there must be something about your collections um, that resonate with different kinds of women. Why do you think that is? I've always been fascinated by things that have a very human hand. And also the idea of, of fit has always been very, very important to me, the idea that you put on a, gar a, a dress and, it, and you immediately feel like a kind of a very beautiful version of yourself and, and having a very clear understanding as to how each garment should fit and fit properly. I've always, I've always been interested in the idea of, of creating something that maybe someone would absorb into their wardrobe and, and wear in five years, in 10 years, in 15 years, or pass on to someone. I, 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 I hate the idea of like a, a kind of a season, seasonality that you would only wear it for the current season and then discard it. I, I, I feel like there's no greater pleasure than seeing someone wear something from five years ago or 10 years ago and, and they kind of mixed it with their own, I don't know, trench coat or something and, and you see them wear it in their own way. But um, I also think that I've always been fascinated by the feminine. I've never really been afraid of, of the feminine and that's even you know, when, even when I was a, a child, I was always interested in things that were about women. I, I was fascinated by how women looked, how they carried themselves. So do you think, you know, this kind of strong intuition or understanding of femininity comes from having really strong female influences in your life? You were very close to your mother. You have a twin sister. You know, how has that played a role in this kind of nascent early interest in, in in all things women? Um, I think we definitely, I, I, um, I was really close to my mother and of course I have a twin sister, so um, I mean, I think it's interesting. My mother, certainly the way that we were raised, both my parents, if they um, enjoyed something, like for instance, my mother loved art, she loved things like Manet and Impressionism and all of those things, she, um, she always shared that with us, so you know, before we'd go to, Bed, maybe she'd show us a book on, I don't know, uh, Impressionism or something. Yeah. And, and there was never this kind of separation between the things that she found interesting and her sharing that with, with my sister and I. And I think that definitely um, affected, affected me from a, from a, from a young age. And, and my sister, uh, who's, a, who's a documentary film director, is, is, is amazing. She's one, fiercely intelligent and I, I, I love her and she's, uh, she's amazing. So I suppose my, my relationship with women is I have a tremendous amount of respect okay. for, for them, if I can say that. That kind of almost sounds like isolating, but I, yeah, I always, I always grew up kind of associating the, the feminine with something that is intelligent and strong. That's, I think that's a really good way of describing the, the, the women I see wearing your dresses. You know, there, there's a lot of women in the world who have really successful power careers. You know, mm. they're successful doctors or lawyers mm. or gallerists mm. or bankers, but they're still women. And I think for some reason, you know, 
even that strong power woman feels mm -hmm. really comfortable and happy in, in your dresses. Absolutely. I mean, I went to San Francisco recently and I was, um, I spent time with um, Marissa Meyer, who's amazing mm. and just an extraordinary woman and friend. And, and um, you know, she's a perfect example of that. I think. She's a power woman. Yeah. So let's, let's talk a little bit more about the store because, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of the designers that end up getting to this stage um, and opening their stores have done so with the help of a financier or investor to help finance the store because put, you mm. know getting a space like this in the heart of the most expensive neighborhood in one of the most expensive cities in the world that's mm -hmm. you know that requires investment mm -hmm. but you've managed to grow and finance your business independently mm -hmm. um, how how have you done that you know how have you managed to to, to kind of source the the funding to to put this store together. Um, I mean, that's a very good question. I think um, it's it's been about um, incremental growth and growing in a very controlled way. I mean, keep in mind also, you know, I, I, I started 10 years ago, so that was 10 years of learning and learning what works and what doesn't and, and evolving. But um, certainly in order to, to get to the point where I felt we were able to open a store had um, everything to do with 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 uh, continued growth, and 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 that was growth through our our through wholesale. But still, you know, you haven't had an unlimited budget to put this store together. You know, you haven't had like a big investor, like one of the big luxury groups, to help you finance the store. So, how did you? You know, you've created a very beautiful, luxurious space. You know, how did you find a way? You know, as an independent business to kind of find all the beautiful things and do all the things needed to make the store um, feel in line with the positioning of your, your collection? I mean, again, we waited a long time till we felt like we could actually afford to do it properly. I think we could have done it perhaps earlier, but it wouldn't have been maybe the, the store that we're sitting in now. Right. Um, and again, it was also working with um, Suppliers that um, that we had relationships with, um, Call Storms, who uh, was responsible for the marble floor upstairs, was um, was amazing and and um, and really worked with us on making that whole marble floor happen, which was you know came from Belgium, came from a quarry that's now closed down, and he, a team from from outside Ant uh, Antwerp came and installed that, and that was because he's also um, a friend of ours. And, and so it was a lot of relying on and collaborating with um, amazing people. Um, you know, everything from the ironmongery that happened in Ghent to uh, the furniture that we're sitting on today from Sigmar. Uh, so much of it had to do with um, kind of amazing collaborations and, and people that really believed in what we were doing. And being scrappy about it because you, you know, like, you know, other people will approach, you know, they'll get Peter Marino or some famous architect to design it, and mm. they'll come in with all sorts of expectations around mm. how, you know, the materials they're using mm. and whatnot. And you've, you know, you've really created an amazingly beautiful space. And I think because, because it, all the materials come from these unique places and mm. have been kind of found, um, you know, you create something really special and unique that can't easily be replicated. Um, you said, earlier you said you know I've been around for 10 years now and you know I've learned a lot along the way mm -hmm. so for all of those really young creative designers who are just at the beginning where mm -hmm. you were 10 years ago you know, look back a bit and you know what what's the advice that you have to offer what are the you know two or three most important lessons that you've learned mm -hmm. since since the beginning I I, I, when I was at the Royal College, we had um, Albert Albaz come over and, and he, um, he did a, a, a project with us very, very briefly. And um, it, the project had everything to do with understanding who your woman is. And um, it didn't necessarily have to be a, very, a tangible kind of black and white character, but just having an understanding of who your woman is, I think, is, was really important. It kind of it dawned on me that, you know, yes, what, you know, what, 
this is all about is her, and that's the most important thing. And that, I think, was probably one of the, the most important lessons. I think another lesson is probably um, patience and understanding that, you know, growing at a, at a slower pace is good, not to get too big too quickly. Why? I think patience is important because you can um, you can control things. You can control how um, your production is made. You can control how what you do is sold. Um, I think all of those things that are so important to get right from the beginning um, require patience. And I think I think understanding that controlled growth is um, a good thing. Um, my last question for you. Is, yes. You know we launched. BOF Education this week. Yes, congratulations. Thank you. And we were all really excited about it. Actually, in the Royal College, came out as number one in our MA rankings. Did it? It did. No way. Yeah. Gosh. And, you know, a lot of students have chimed in on, on the um, comment section. Yeah. And, you know, they're trying, you know, a lot of, I, I learned that a lot of young people are, you know, they're trying to figure out mm. how to choose the right school for them. Mm -hmm. So if you were one of those young people mm -hmm. back, choosing where to go, you know, mm -hmm. what is it that you think young people should look for in a fashion school? I mean, I think the most important thing is to probably look for what else the college offers as a whole. I think to me, I spent so much time outside of my department. I, you know, you had things like the extraordinary photography department where you'd have people like Wolfgang Tillmans come give lectures, or you had the architecture department upstairs. They had Hussein Chalayan came come in not to give a lecture with fashion, the fashion department, but to give a lecture in the architecture department. I think um, cross-pollination is so important. I think um, if I was to choose where I was going to go to uh, university and where I was going to complete my education, it would be about what else they offer and who else is there. Because to me, so much of my time was spent outside of my department and being nosy. Being nosy is good. In a way, it's because uh, curiosity sparks creativity. It was, um, it was great. I loved it. Well, that was, you know, more than 10 years ago. And here we are 10 years later. Yeah. I hope that we'll be able to sit down in 10 more years. Yes. And, and look at the next decade, because I think it's, um, this is a real milestone. So congratulations. Thank you. And uh, best of luck. I know that there were the first wave of customers came in yesterday. I'm sure there'll be many, many more waves Thanks in so the much. coming years. Good yeah. luck. Thanks so much, Amrit. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. For more in-depth fashion interviews, subscribe to The Business of Fashion on YouTube.